today we're going to look at another item that most people pass by that still makes us a good chunk of change. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about something that I find quite often, something that most everybody else just doesn't pay attention to. Now, I've talked about pens and pencils before, but we're going to talk about floating pens, floating pencils, something very unique, something different, something that if you're not paying attention, you can miss in a drawer all over the place. I find these at estate sales. I never pay more than, say, a dollar at the very, very most. The least amount of money I've ever got from selling any of these has been 25 bucks plus shipping. So let's hop over and look at some of these right now. So here's a floating pen. Basically, there's liquid inside the pen and something on the pen is moving. Now that airplane moves back and forth as you tilt it. It's kind of like a snow globe for pens or pencils. These things can sell for some insane amounts of money. 125 bucks for this one here. Most people don't assume they're worth much money and they'll list them up really cheap and that's why they don't sell for a ton of money. You will see that a chunk of these was listed for almost nothing and that's all they sold for. So if you go back and look at Terapeak or completed listings, you'll see that. You also see if you only type in floating that they use the word floaty, floater, floating, moving, view. There's a many different types like that. Some of the most common ones I run into are of... Uh, clothing being removed, nude, adult style pens. Basically, you tilt it and a lady's or a gentleman's clothing will disappear. They'll be in their underwear on the end of it. Those are usually the most common ones, but most all of the advertising will go for some good money. Again, the vintage ones, I've never ever sold one for less than $25. I've sold them in the same price range, 125 bucks before as well. Many people just throw them up in a lot and don't realize that there's money involved and that you could get 25 bucks a piece for each one of these. So many people give these away far, far too cheap. Now, advertising, cartoon characters, and that type of thing do extremely well. Here's a perfect example, as you can see here. See if we can zoom in just a little bit. Someone moves in every single one of these. Something slides back and forth. Or the reveal pens. Hundreds of these sell at any given time. Many people don't know how to title them. So you may not be able to find them all, but there's a ton of them around. Snow Globe I've seen used in the title description as well. You can see what the price is on these. These went for 85 bucks for these three. Now, I would have sold them separately for probably around 50 bucks a pop if they were mine. I would have put them up as a bin with a best offer, not as an auction. Because then again, you would be able to get more for them this way. You're setting the price. You're not letting the market set the price when you do it as a bin with best offer for whatever price you want. Disneyland is another one. We found Disneyland ones that go back into the late 50s, early 60s. Those are always the best. Individual ones, in many cases, can go for 25 to 75 bucks from Disneyland. Specific rides and attractions will go for a whole bunch more. They're very scarce. They don't show up very often. But again, most people aren't looking for these. They don't have a clue on what they are, how to list them, or anything else like that. you got to have the right word in the title. Floating is one of the more common ones. Floater, float things along that line. Look around and you will see. Type in nude and pen and you will see the bunch of them as well. Here's another Disney lot. There's a bunch of Disney ones. The vintage ones always do extremely well. If you put them up low, you will only get a low price for them. I would have busted these up, probably sold them individually for 20 bucks a pop, and I would have probably been able to get that for them if I marketed them, right keywords, SEO, and the whole works. Now, new or old, it doesn't seem to matter in this field at all. This is from Friends, the TV series. It's boxed. I wouldn't care if it was boxed or not. I would have still put fifty-seven fifty on this, even out of the box and loose, just because it's a little scarce and oddball item. These were very popular at one time. When the pens run out like this, these days people just toss them. No one refills a pen hardly like this sort of thing. So you will run into them. Who cares if they work? It doesn't matter if they work on any of these either. Most of these, you could have the ink 
cartridge insert replace. I don't waste the time. I just sell them as they are. Now here's another lot. Now this was a bin. Someone priced these way, 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 way too low. Now I would have put 25 or better on each one of these without a doubt. Probably would have gotten way, way, way more than this person. So you got to price it right. You got to know what they are. You got to know value on these. You can't just look and see what everybody else does because most people in this category, this type of thing, haven't a clue on value or what they sell for. I've sold a bunch of these. They all sell for us, every single one. I would never group these sorts together unless there is no value. But just looking at, say, this lot here, there's some good value in here. Lots of different unique ones, too. Again, I don't care if they're old, new, or what. They always do seem to sell. This seems to be a mix, though. So, fine. I would still sell them individually. Here's another new one. This is a holiday one. Again, you put them up for 30 bucks. That's all it's going to sell for. This would have been a $50 item in my book with all the stuff that came with it. I'm never afraid to put what I think is a good price, even if it's high compared to what everybody else sells them at. If you list something low, you will only sell it low. You're not going to get a ton of money out of something when you list it cheap. If I only list it for 30 bucks, that's all I'm going to get out of it is 30 bucks. If I listed for 57, 50 chances are I could have got that, especially now around Christmas. Now here's one for Dom, primetime treasure hunter, big Doctor Who fan, a Doctor Who set. They've sold one. They haven't been up very long. These are new. These are fringe. Not a lot of Doctor Who collectors are probably going to even know what these are, in all honesty. May not even have them in the right section, for all I know, on these. But 30 bucks either way, that's a fine sale on these. Now here's a vintage one, and you can kind of see on this one here, that car goes from side to side. It rolls across the pen as you tilt it. Basically 25 bucks once you figure out shipping on these. Now that's about average what I get for some of the cheaper, more generic style like this one here. They've made them for pretty much anything you could think of. There's some vintage Star Wars. I haven't seen a vintage Star Wars one in a while, but here's a newer one, $27 on this one here. Here's a set for the Beatles. Now, there's a bunch of Beatles ones. There are a few vintage Beatle ones. I have seen a few Apple Record ones where the Apple rolls around on the base of it. Those can go for hundreds of dollars if it's an original 60s or 70s Apple Record version of these. Still, $25. Bucks. They only put it up for $25, bucks, mind you. If if you put this up for $57.50, chances are you would have got more for this item. I never, ever, ever price these cheap. I would rather drop the price later to $25 bucks if it doesn't sell in months time frame or six months a year, whatever the case may be. Now, here's another grouping of them here. I believe these are a mix here. Let's see if we can't get a zoom in on one of these. Yeah, some of these are old. This one does look like it's a little older one by the tip I see on there and the little bit of marks on it. Again, I would have put these up higher. European ones do not sell as high as the U.S. versions, unless it's something unique or special. Mostly U.S. collectors are messing with these. Just keep that in mind. There are some overseas, as we saw with the London one, that will still net you some good money. Theme parks, uh, tourist places are some of the better ones that I run into. Space Needle in Seattle, a nice example here. This is vintage, late 60s, early 70s. Now, I've seen these dating back into the 40s before. I don't know when these first came out. I haven't a clue. I haven't even worried about looking them up. Just because I know that I usually get 25 bucks or better, this one I would have probably put, out again, for 50-some-odd bucks or better. You'll be surprised. Don't follow along in some of these cases like everybody else is doing. There's limited quantity. There may have been no other one of the Space Needle up this entire year, believe it or not. So this person could have set the price. Anytime on something like this, you cannot judge the price based on other ones similar because there's nothing quite similar. Every advertisement, every graphic in one of these is special to that specific one. And there's different types of collectors. So this one, again, I would have priced pretty much most of these higher. Now here's a Chevron one. Now I've run into many of the car dealer ones, usually from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Something floats across it, as you can see. Sometimes it's an airplane pulling an advertisement or whatever the case may be. These all do extremely well. Don't price them too cheap based on what you see everybody else pricing them at. You will be surprised. There's not a lot of these around. There's a lot of collectors for these, though. A ton of collectors. If you list them cheap again, this one was listed as a bin, $24.95. It's all it sells for. If you don't list it for hire, it's not going to sell for more. Even at an auction, there may only be one person on at a specific time. So I would never auction these off. 
off. I would always list them high and then take a best offer on them. You will come out far better on these sorts of things. Now you can go up and look at Terapeak and see for yourself that you'll do better on many items just by doing as a high price bin and letting the offers come in. You price them at an auction again, there may only be one person interested in this. But over time, someone who's interested may pay higher because it's the only one up. It's the only one in the history. It's the only one around to buy. Now here's a back to the future. Now I'm sure this is from Universal Studios in Florida. I remember these when we were on that ride ourselves. I lived in Florida for many years. Again, a little underpriced on this one. I would have put around $34.50 on these. Even though they're fairly new, you would be surprised. Most people don't know. Title-wise, could have used some work on here without a doubt as well. And one last one again, somebody sold two of these together. I would have most assuredly sold these separately, listed them in the 45, 50 range and just went from there. The semi goes back and forth as you tilt it. Basically, there's like a small tube in the center of this that this object, whatever it may be, in this case, it's a semi, and it allows it to float back and forth freely in that section. So rather interesting, very unique items. Many people miss them. Don't let these pass you by. Look in every drawer when you're at a sale or anything else like that. I always, always look at pens. I found these at estate sales, thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales, church sales, antique malls. Pretty much everywhere I've went, I've found these. State sales are the greatest because usually you'll find them in a drawer and most people won't look in the drawer. Or if they open up a drawer, they'll only look and say, oh, pens, and they'll just pass them by. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Super GoBots, the mightiest GoBots of all. Stacks leader one inside, kill sold separately. Think you're big enough for the king of the road? Try me. Mighty GoBots, mighty vehicles, GoBots. Two big stacks. Not so fast, Psycho. Thanks, good buddy. Super GoBots, stacks leader one inside, kill each sold separately from Tonka.